I'm joined by Enrico Letta. He's a former Italian Prime Minister, and he's also the lead candidate of the Partito Democratico, so the Democrats in Italy. Italians are heading to the polls on the 25th of September to elect a new government. But, Mr. Letta, thank you very much for joining us. It's Your rival, Giorgio Meloni from the Brothers of Italy, is currently leading in the polls. How do you intend to win against her? Uh, we, we have one final week in the electoral campaign. In this final week, we will work very hard on many subjects. First of all, is the big risk for Italy with the far right to be out from the heart of the European Union, the very heart of the European Union. Italy uh, used to be at the very heart of Europe, and Italy needs to be at the center of the European Union. We need stronger Europe. That is exactly the opposite uh, that uh, Meloni and, and, and the far right in Italy thinks. They, their idea is that uh, um, Europe has to work with veto rights for each country, unanimity votes. That is exactly the opposite for us. We think that we need more federal Europe, more integration, uh, majority votes and not uh, unanimity votes. We need Europe of health. We need further integration on migration policies, on social issues, on how to work on energy, for instance. How much significance would a government under Giorgio Maloney give to the autocratic bloc? I mean, there's a power struggle going on between sort of the old Western um, European countries and the fairly new members in the East. How dangerous is that for the European Union as a concept? I think we saw last week uh, how big is the danger. At the European Parliament, uh, Meloni and Salvini, they decided to help Orban against what the European Union is deciding uh, on Orban's uh, decisions on uh, rule of law, on the way in which the European Commission is dealing with the problem of uh, uh, the fact that Orban is breaking uh, the rule of law in, uh, in Hungary and the way in which uh, we are trying to condition uh, what they are doing on democracy with, with the European uh, uh, funds and European uh, money. And Salvini and Meloni, they decided to help Orban. I think it's the key to understand that the Italian far right will bring the country in a different mood and will bring the country also in a different mood in terms of uh, not only rule of law, but also in terms of big choices on the environment, on individual rights, and also on the way in which we can build up the future of uh, Europe in terms of uh, institutional reforms. And it is clear that there's a bloc, Orban, the Polish government, uh, uh, Meloni and Salvini, they want to have a future where uh, all the decisions uh, had been taken uh, with, with, with uh, uh, veto rights, unanimity, and I think this is one of the key issues. Uh, further integration with a communitarian approach, with majority votes, or League of Nations, nationalism, uh, veto rights, and uh, unanimity. Now, when you talk about Giorgio Maloney as the potential new Italian Prime Minister, what would a government led by her mean for Italy's support of Ukraine? Uh, the coalition around Maloney is a very divided coalition on Ukraine. Uh, because you have um, Maloney. Maloney had a, a position uh, during the war backing the government even if she was in, uh, in, in the opposition. But on the war, she supported the government. On the other uh, side, you have uh, Salvini and Berlusconi, and both Salvini and Berlusconi had a very ambiguous um, uh, mood and, and approach to the war, and, and first of all to, to Putin. Salvini is continuing saying that uh, sanctions are negative. We have to withdraw sanctions. For us, it's... Uh, it's nonsense. It's something that uh, it's very dangerous for, for the rest of the European uh, uh, Union, the European leaders, European countries. So we are strongly against this position. But, but 
think under uh, Giorgia Maloney <laughs> that Italy could potentially withdraw support for uh, sanctions against Russia? Uh, I fear, I'm afraid, that this point could be one of the first points of discussion within their coalition in case of victory on the, on the right side. Uh, of course, we, will be, we would be strongly against because we think that sanctions, they have to continue. Now, you're here in Berlin also to talk to a German Chancellor, Olaf Scholz, who is from your sister party, the Social Democrats, mm -hmm. here in Germany. Um, there is a debate in Germany, which I'm sure you're aware of, about uh, the delivery of combat tanks to Ukraine. The SPD and Olaf Scholz are very reluctant. Would you, as Prime Minister, support the idea of Germany delivering combat tanks to Ukraine? We have to help Ukraine. That's for sure, and we have to continue helping Ukraine. Uh, of course, the, 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 the tools, the mood, the, the details uh, have to be uh, decided at, at, uh, uh, among allies, uh, and, uh, but we are very supportive uh, whatever decision uh, Germany will take. Now, Olaf Scholz, the German Chancellor, um, always says Putin must not win this war. What is your position? Does Ukraine have to win or does Putin not have to win? Does he have to lose? No, I think our position is the position to say that this war is horrible. Uh, it is horrible that someone, Putin, decided to uh, keep again the most uh, tragic tools approaches and uh, behaviors of last century. Uh, so Putin has to lose this war. That is for clear and uh, we will keep this position until the end and we will be supportive of Ukraine until the end of the war. But I'll have to repeat my question. Should Putin lose? Yes, I said yes. He has to and, lose. And does Ukraine have to win? Because that would imply winning back all the territory that Russia is currently seized. But I have to say that, of course, if we uh, Putin lose and if we if Putin withdraw, that means that uh, Ukraine will uh, will be free, and we want Ukraine uh, being free. You warned in an interview a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken, that Europe has to make a decision if it doesn't want to become an American colony or a Chinese colony, reforms are needed in the European Union, more European sovereignty. How threatened do you see the European project? And would you repeat this statement that Europe has to make a, a firm decision if it doesn't want to become a colony of either the US or China? I think today we have to consider that Putin's attack on energy sovereignty um, needs a common reaction at the European level. So uh, our point, my point, is that to avoid to become uh, a Chinese colony or uh, either a, an American colony, we have to consider that our sovereignty, our strength, our unity, our unity has to be strengthened, for instance, on energy, on competitiveness. Otherwise, we risk to lose competitiveness uh, because on energy, for instance, the American today, uh, they, thanks to shale gas, to their uh, energy national sovereignty, they can be more competitive rather than our uh, companies. What can the German government do to help Italy remain at the heart of Europe, as you say? I think it is very simple. Uh, the narrative of the right in Italy is the narrative of a European Union without a solidarity mood, saying that Germany and France, they work only for their own interests, not for the general interests of Europe. Uh, don't they have a point? I mean, in the issue of migration, for example, Germany and France said, okay, Italy, you deal with it, we're staying out of it. I don't think so. I think there, there are different approaches on that. For instance, Germany and Italy, we have common interests on migrations. Uh, Italy is the country of first arrival. Germany is normally the country of uh, last uh, destination. So uh, Italy uh, had the feeling to be left alone during many periods of uh, high-level arrivals, but also Germany had this feeling five years ago. The feeling of Germany was to be left alone by the rest of Europe. 
when, when Germany decided to welcome hundreds of, of thousands of refugees because there's not a European migration policy. So our mood is to say we want a stronger Europe. Stronger Europe means better decision for citizens, citizens in Italy, citizens in France or in Germany. Uh, this is not the mood of the Italian right. The mood of the Italian right is to build up Europe in a sense of uh, a league of nations with veto rights, cooperation, no more than, than that. What is at stake for Italy here on the 25th of September? The uh, 25th of September vote is a sort of uh, Brexit vote, as it was for uh, the, the Brits. For them, it was yes or no, in or out. I think for Italy, it's, it's something similar. Of course, it's not a referendum. It's not, uh, the topic is not to be in or out formally. But politically, the choice is between being at the very heart of Europe, uh, Italy with uh, Brussels, uh, Berlin, Paris, Madrid, the heart of Europe, or being out being in a League of Nations, having uh, Orban or the Polish government as allied. And uh, I think that these two options, this crossroad, is decisive for the future of the country, not only in terms of uh, monetary policies, uh, sustainability of the debt, also in terms of values. Uh, being with France and Germany means on environment, individual rights, uh, one choice, being with Orban, is another choice on uh, environment, on individual rights, and of course also on uh, uh, economic policies and institutional policies and so social policies at European level. Enrico Letta, lead candidate for the Partito Democratico in Italy, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you to you.